The Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex is the visitor center at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. It features exhibits and displays, historic spacecraft and memorabilia, shows, two IMAX theaters, and a range of bus tours of the spaceport. Space Shuttle Atlantis is home to the real Space Shuttle Atlantis Orbiter and the Shuttle Launch Experience, a simulated ride into space. The center also provides astronaut training experiences, including a multi-axial chair and Mars base simulator. The visitor complex also has daily presentations from a veteran NASA astronaut. A bus tour, included with admission, encompasses the separate Apollo, Saturn V Center. There were 1.7 million visitors to the visitor complex in 2016. Topic: History. The complex had its beginning in 1963 when NASA Administrator James Webb 1960s established self-guided tours the public could drive along a predetermined route through the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station and a small trailer containing simple displays on card tables. An estimated 100,000 visitors went through that first year. As the American space program's popularity grew with the Mercury program and Alan Shepard's historic launch, large numbers of press and public flocked to the Cape Canaveral area to get a close-up view. Webb was urged by U.S. Rep. Olin Teague of Texas to create a visitor's program. By 1964, more than 250,000 self-guided car tours, permitted between 1 and 4 p.m. E.T. on Sundays, were seen at Kennedy Space Center In 1965, KSC director Kurt H. Debus was authorized to spend $2 million on a full-scale visitor center, covering 42 acres. Spaceport USA, as it was soon titled, hosted 500,000 visitors in 1967, its first year, and 1 million by 1969. 10,000 visitors toured the center on December 24, 1968, following the Apollo 8 orbit of the Moon. Beginning July 22, 1966, public tours were offered on 40 passenger buses. Operated by TWA, a 1.5-hour tour that included the vehicle assemble building and a 3-hour tour including launch facilities were available. Tickets ranged from 50 cents for children 12 and under to $2.50 for adults for the longer tour. More than 1,500 people toured that first day and additional buses were quickly added to the fleet of former Greyhound buses. TWA continued operating tours through at least the bicentennial celebrations in 1976. As NASA neared the Moon, popularity grew. By 1969, the Visitor Center was the second most visited Florida attraction, behind Tampa's Busch Gardens. Even during the gap between the Apollo and Space Shuttle programs, attendance remained at over one million guests and it ranked as the fifth most popular tourist attraction in Florida. When nearby Walt Disney World opened in 1971, Visitor Center attendance increased by 30%, but the public was often disappointed by the comparative lack of polish at KSC's tourist facilities. Existing displays were largely made up of trade show exhibits donated by NASA contractors. Later that year, a $2.3 million upgrade of the visitor complex began with added focus on the benefits of space exploration along with the existing focus on human space exploration. In 1995, Delaware North Companies was selected to operate the visitor center. Between 1995 and 2007, the Visitor's Center went through many changes, including the improvement of restaurants, retail shops, buses, and new exhibits. It is also when the Visitor Complex got its current name, Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex. Since then, the facility has been entirely self-supporting and receives no taxpayer or government funding. Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex was voted the eighth best museum in the United States by TripAdvisor in 2016. 
NASA renewed the contract with Delaware North Companies through 2028. Topic attractions included in the base admission is tour bus transportation to both launch pads and the surrounding KSC property, and the Apollo – Saturn V Center. Previously, it used to include admission to the Astronaut Hall of Fame, 6 miles kilometers to the west. That building is now closed and the U.S. Astronaut Hall of Fame resides in a new exhibit at the Visitor Complex, Heroes and Legends. The Apollo – Saturn V Center, located 6 miles kilometers north inside NASA's gates, is a large museum built around its centerpiece exhibit, a restored Saturn V launch vehicle, and features other space-related exhibits, including an Apollo capsule. Two theaters allow the visitor to relive parts of the Apollo program. One simulates the environment inside an Apollo firing room during an Apollo launch, and another simulates the Apollo 11 moon landing. The tour formerly included the Space Station Processing Facility where modules for the International Space Station were tested. The visitor complex includes two facilities run by the Astronauts Memorial Foundation. The most visible of these is the Space Mirror Memorial, also known as the Astronaut Memorial, a huge black granite mirror through engraved with the names of all astronauts who died in the line of duty. Elsewhere on the visitor complex grounds is the Foundation Center for Space Education, which includes a resource center for teachers, among other facilities, and the Kurt Debus Conference Center. Heroes and Legends, which replaced the previous Early Space Exploration exhibit, houses the U.S. Astronaut Hall of Fame and several displays of artifacts. Among them is the Gemini 9A spacecraft, as well as a recreation of the Mercury Control Center using consoles and furniture relocated from the original building at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station. These were previously housed in the Mercury Mission Control Facility, which was on the National Register of Historic Places, but it was demolished in May 2010 due to concerns about asbestos and the estimated $5 million cost to renovate the building after 40 years of exposure to salt air. <laughs> Space Shuttle Atlantis In 2010, the center announced a $100 million plan to house a retired shuttle orbiter in a 10-story 64,000 square feet 5 square meters facility. On April 12, 2011, the 30th anniversary of the launch of STS-1, NASA announced that Space Shuttle Atlantis would be provided to the Visitor's Center for display after its last flight on STS-135 and subsequent decommissioning. The exhibit officially opened on June 29, 2013, offering a nearly 360-degree view of the shuttle. Atlantis is positioned at a 43.21 degrees angle with the payload bay doors open, a view only previously seen in space. The exhibit also includes a life-sized replica of Hubble Space Telescope, the shuttle program's Astrovan, Dr. Maxime Faggot's shuttle prototype from 1969, a large-scale slide mimicking the 22-degree slope of a space shuttle when landing, numerous astronaut training and shuttle simulators, and other displays about life in space. On the ground level is the "...forever remembered." exhibit, commemorating the 14 astronauts lost in both Space Shuttle Challenger and Space Shuttle Columbia disasters. Forever Remembered includes personal artifacts from the astronauts, two recovered pieces of the shuttles, footage of the physical and emotional recovery, and the return to flight. <laughs> Shuttle launch experience The shuttle launch experience, designed by Bob Rogers and the design team BRC Imagination Arts, opened May 25, 2007. The attraction puts guests through a simulated shuttle launch. Delaware North Companies invested six years and $60 million into the attraction. Astronauts, NASA experts and attraction industry leaders were consulted during development. 
The attraction is housed in a 44,000 square foot (4,100 square meters) building that holds four simulators, each accommodating 44 people. Former shuttle commander and then NASA administrator Charles F. Bolden narrates the simulation and hosts the pre-recorded pre-show. Topic Heroes and Legends The United States Astronaut Hall of Fame is now located in Heroes and Legends, which replaced the previous early space exploration exhibit inside the visitor complex's main entrance. The $20 million exhibit, which opened in 2016, focuses on America's first astronauts and nine characteristics of a hero. Each characteristic features astronaut artifacts and multimedia relevant to that characteristic. Key artifacts include the Gemini 9A capsule, the original NASA emblem from the Mercury Control Center 1959, the control center from Project Mercury remaining from early space exploration, Mercury Redstone rocket Mr. 6 likely intended for Dickey Slayton, and the Sigma 7 capsule intended for Wally Shearer. There are also artifacts from specific astronauts, such as Gus Grissom's suborbital flight suit from July 21, 1961. Heroes and Legends also holds the U.S. Astronaut Hall of Fame, displaying the inducted men and women. In the center of the hall is an interactive kiosk with an inductee database, a mission index, and a virtual photo opportunity with the Mercury 7 astronauts. The Boeing Company is the title sponsor of Heroes and Legends, which marked the first time the visitor complex entered an agreement with a corporate sponsor in more than 50 years. U.S. Astronaut Hall of Fame The United States Astronaut Hall of Fame, located inside the Heroes and Legends building, is included with Visitor Complex Daily Admission. The Hall of Fame was previously owned and operated by the U.S. Space Camp Foundation, but was purchased at auction by Delaware North Park Services in September 2002 on behalf of NASA. The building was renamed the ATX Center and houses educational programs including Camp Kennedy Space Center and the Astronaut Training Experience. Topic Rocket Garden The Rocket Garden is located inside the front entrance. Beyond Heroes and Legends, it is an outdoor display of historic rockets that put Americans and satellites in space. Visitors can walk up to and around the base of the rockets. The Mercury Redstone, Mercury Atlas 6, and Titan II rockets launched astronauts and the Juno I, Juno II, Thor Delta, and Atlas Agena rockets launched satellites from Cape Canaveral. These are mounted upright whereas the largest rocket, a Saturn IB, is mounted on its side. Saturn IB rockets launched Apollo Command – Service modules into Earth orbit for Apollo, Skylab, and the Apollo-Soyuz test project. The Saturn IB is being restored in 2018. The Juno I on display is painted with serial number UE, a reference to the vehicle that launched the first U.S. satellite. Explorer IA Juno II launched the first American probe to escape Earth's gravity and fly past the Moon. Atlas Agena rockets launched early probes to the Moon, Venus, and Mars, as well as the Agena target vehicles used in rendezvous and docking by Gemini spacecraft, a necessary technique for the following Apollo missions. The Thor Delta was one of the most reliable and frequently used launch vehicles. The Titan II on display is a refurbished Air Force ICBM with a replica Gemini spacecraft, painted to resemble the Gemini 3 booster. It was rescued from the Arizona Boneyard and erected in 2010 to replace a deteriorating mock-up composed of two first stages which had been on display for more than 20 years. The Saturn IB on display is SA-209 which was designated for a possible Skylab rescue mission. The garden also features mock-ups of capsules from the Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo programs that visitors can get in. An F-1 rocket engine that powered the first stage of the Saturn V is also on display. Free guided tours of the garden are available daily. <laughs> rocket Garden Gallery
Topic: <laughs> Apollo Saturn V Center. Media related to Apollo Saturn V Center at Wikimedia Commons. The Apollo Saturn V Center, 28.6055 degrees north, 80.6696 degrees west, 28.6055-80.6696 Apollo Saturn V Center is located north northwest of Launch Complex 39 on the Kennedy Parkway N near the shuttle landing facility and is only accessible to visitors by bus tours from the visitors complex. The center, which opened December 17, 1996, was designed by Bob Rogers designer and the design team BRC Imagination Arts, for NASA and Delaware North Companies. The opening of the exhibit was historic for NASA as it was the first large exhibit to be opened inside a restricted area, only accessible by Kennedy Space Center tour buses. The 100,000 square foot facility was built to house a restored Saturn V launch vehicle and features other exhibits related to the Apollo program. Until the structure was built, the Saturn V was displayed horizontally for many years outdoors just south of the Vehicle Assembly Building and tour buses brought visitors to it. Other large exhibits include the Apollo 14 Command Module, an unused Apollo Command – Service Module CSM 119, and an unused Lunar Module LM9. CSM-119 was designated for a possible Skylab rescue mission and as a backup for the Apollo-Soyuz test project. LM-9 was originally scheduled to be used on Apollo 15, but when missions after Apollo 17 were cancelled, a later LM was used instead. Also on display is a slice of moon rock that visitors can touch. Other exhibits include a replica of the lunar roving vehicle, a variety of space suits including Alan Shepard's Apollo 14 extravehicular suit, a piece of Apollo 13's lunar module returned by the astronauts, lunar samples from Apollo 15 and Apollo 17, and a large cut-away scale model of the Saturn V2 theaters allow visitors to relive parts of the Apollo program. One simulates the environment inside an Apollo-era firing room during during the launch of Apollo 8 and the other simulates the Apollo 11 landing. In January 2017, Ad Astra per Aspera, a rough road leads to the stars, opened in the Apollo, Saturn V Center to commemorate the fallen astronauts of Apollo 1. The permanent tribute showcases personal memorabilia from the three astronauts, with photos and video from their professional and personal lives. The exhibit also displays the charred three-section Block I hatch from the fire, and a redesigned Block II hatch. The Block II hatch flew on all following Apollo missions that could open quicker in the event of an emergency. <laughs> <laughs> Apollo – Saturn V Center Gallery Topic. Journey to Mars – Explorers Wanted In 2010, the attraction Exploration Space – Explorers Wanted, also designed by BRC Imagination Arts, functioned as part immersive experience, and part futuristic recruitment center. It is now known as Journey to Mars – Explorers Wanted with a focus on Mars exploration. The attraction, which employs large-scale video projections, dimensional exhibits and interactive experiences, is designed to immerse visitors into the adventure and unsolved challenges of future space exploration. The exhibit includes orbital docketing and lunar landing simulators, a full-sized development model of a crew vehicle, a model of a space exploration vehicle, and models of the Mars rover family, Curiosity, Spirit, Opportunity, and Sojourner. <laughs> NASA Now NASA Now is an exhibit that has a revolving display of spacecraft from NASA and its commercial partners. 
NASA now, as of summer 2017, has the space flown Orion F1 designed for NASA's future space launch system (SLS) and a scale model of an SLS rocket. There is also a full-scale model of the crew vehicle CST-100 Starliner by Boeing. SpaceX's space-flown COTS-2 Dragon capsule, which is the first commercial vehicle to dock with the International Space Station, is also featured. A pressure vessel for CST-100 Starliner, a scale model of the Dream Chaser cargo vehicle from Sierra Nevada Corporation, a scale model of United Launch Alliance's Atlas V rocket, and a Vector R rocket from Vector Space Systems are also all in the exhibit. NASA now is located inside the IMAX theater. Topic: <laughs> Space Mirror Memorial. The Space Mirror Memorial, also known as the Astronaut Memorial, is maintained by the Astronauts Memorial Foundation and is located behind the IMAX Theater on the grounds of the main visitor complex. It honors NASA astronauts along with several military and civilian astronauts who have died in the line of duty. <laughs> Angry Bird Space Encounter closed. Angry Bird Space Encounter opened at Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex on March 22, 2013. The attraction was based on Angry Birds and Angry Birds Space, which is a first in the U.S. The 4,485-square-foot attraction included six interactive stations which encouraged young people to use math and science. It was a temporary exhibit, and closed in early 2015. Topic. Robot Scouts closed. In 1999, the attraction, Robot Scouts, opened as a walk-through exhibit highlighting NASA's unmanned planetary robot probes. The attraction, designed originally by award-winning experience designer Bob Rogers designer and the design team BRC Imagination Arts, explores how robots help to pave the way for human spaceflight. The attraction is now closed, and replaced by a new more enhanced and activity-packed scout program. Topic. Special events and programs The Visitors' Complex also hosts special ticketed events run by Delaware North. Naturalization ceremonies have been conducted in the Rocket Garden. Space Shuttle launch viewing was offered and now rocket launch viewing, from the Visitor Complex, offering close views of the launch pads. The U.S. Astronaut Hall of Fame hosts a yearly induction ceremony. The astronaut training experience is also offered by Delaware North at the Astronaut Training Experience Center with several full-sized mock-ups of the Space Shuttle, mission control and training hardware. The complex also runs week-long accredited day camps for children in grades 2 to 9. The Visitor Complex offers events all year, ranging from astronaut presentations and signing opportunities, special guest appearances, and anniversary celebrations. The music video for "'Walking on the Moon' by The Police was shot at the Kennedy Space Center on 23 October 1979. It features the band members miming to the track amidst spacecraft displays, interspersed with NASA footage. Stuart Copeland strikes his drumsticks on a Saturn V moon rocket. Also, the music video for the 1992 Eurodance song, Rhythm as a Dancer, by Snap, was filmed at Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex's Rocket Garden. See also Air Force Space and Missile Museum Cape Canaveral Air Force Station United States Astronaut Hall of Fame <laughs>